Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today is a pretty rainy day on the farm and you can hear the rain hitting the hoop house in the background. But we wanted to take a video of our ranunculus because we've had a number of people say, okay, we've seen how you've done the pre-sprout, we've seen how you planted it, how did it make it through the winter, and what do things look like? This year we planted um, in two different hoop houses. This hoop house is uh, got basically our salmon. This is the, the uh, Italian uh, Elegant Series Salmon Salmoni. And it's, for the most part, salmon. Uh, we've got a few strays in here. You'll see that there's some violets and a couple of other things in here. But for the most part, uh, these are the plants that we planted. Uh, I believe it was right around the beginning of October. And this was using the pre-sprout method of actually soaking them for a, a couple hours in an aerated. And you can check out the video on how we did it. And, and then we uh, pre-sprouted them in a cool 50 degree dark room. Uh, we put them into a mix of peat moss and perlite, kind of in a 10-20 tray. And started to sprout them just like you would if you were kind of planting them, with just a, maybe a half inch. We had no rot whatsoever. That carried through. Uh, we had no losses to rot this winter. Uh, we weren't it's an exceptionally cold winter, but we had a number of nights where we got down into the low 20s and I think maybe even in, into the teens. So we haven't yet picked up all our fabric cloth. You, you may notice it from the other side over here. We tried to overwinter some centered geraniums and uh, the results on that were mixed. As we peeled things back, we noticed we ended up with uh, quite a few that didn't make it. However, Everything on the ranunculus side made it. So as we walk down the row here, what I wanted to point out is how we planted is we planted in three rows. This is approximately a 36 inch wide bed. We planted in three rows and each plant was about six inches apart. So this is how they ended up. They really got big and robust. We got a little bit of yellowing on some of the older leaves, but uh, for the most part, the plants were, were pretty healthy. We didn't use any extra fertilizer on these guys other than when we planted, we put down some fishbone meal and some cottonseed meal and azomite, uh, as well as we put on an inch of compost, well-rotted compost. And that's all these guys took. And we're ready to start harvest. And this bed really, uh, I think it's going to do really well for us. We've got a couple other varieties down here in the back end. Um, since we're Oregon State alums and we sell into Oregon State country, Corvallis, uh, we put in some orange and they look pretty good. We've taken a few ranunculus off this, but this is going to be the week where we think the big flush is starting, as you can see all the buds, so they look pretty good. And all we've got to do now is keep this thing cool and protected, and we can have a, a pretty good harvest out of here. So this bed came out real well. Now. We did another bed in another hoop house, and we'll go over and take a walk through and take a look at that. Because the results on that one are absolutely, totally 180 degrees away from this one. Spoiler alert. As you can see, we've got a, a few volunteers from crop we put in here we had four years ago we had Sorrent in here which we could never really market very well uh, and it keeps coming back <laughs> it's like uh, it wants to naturalize now we've got a couple here but we got uh, I guess we did get a little rot in that one that's not too bad though. We need to get one or two of these guys. And it looks like the base stem is still okay, so we'll just cut that out. Yeah, the stem is still. We had, it was probably frost damage, 
We had a, a real hard freeze about three nights ago. We got down to probably 26, 27. And uh, because of the stage of where these guys were at, it was difficult for us to protect them. And last year we had tulips in here, so we have a volunteer, looks like a Dior, may not cause any damage but we've got some form of a rodent right here it looks like a mole he kind of pushed up a few a little bit of dirt in between the road it doesn't look like he did any damage to the plants it'll do more damage for us to try to trap him at this point than it would be to just kind of keep an eye on that one You know, and again, you can see some of the frost damage from the other night we got when we got really cold. So we got a few blossoms that, you know, we're going to lose from that, unfortunately. Also tinge some of the um, foliage, too. So that's an unfortunate. We're just going to take that blossom out. Sometimes you get frost damage there. You get frost damage, yep. So you just try to cut it out and uh, get it away from the plants before any rot really gets going on it. And you can see we've lost a few branches. This is the back end of the tunnel. So what happened is these guys got it got colder back here than it did in the front end but on a positive note the snapdragons are looking great when you stand back and take a look at these guys and these will be uh, in May so they're just getting ready to the point where they're going to start stretching so we're going to put some netting on them this weekend Well, this is the other tunnel. We planted this one about a month later. We used the same techniques, and at the time when we, we brought the corms in ready to plant, we didn't see any rot or anything like that. They looked like they all had healthy roots. And we planted uh, a couple different varieties in here, uh, a violet, which was a labelle. And then this uh, group right here is Bianca from the Elegance series. And in the back where there's a few more blooms, uh, we have the uh, white Piketty, which was um, from also from the LaBelle series. And these guys came up, they looked okay when they first came up, but they never thrived. And basically what happened is they rotted off. Now last year we had a similar problem in here, uh, and we thought it was some filings. But, um, you know, we can dig through the soil and there's moisture in the soil but there's really no symphilins. I mean there's always symphilins in our soil but you you would expect that you would start to see you know a fair amount well there's a few right there there's one or two right there but we're beginning to believe because of what's going on here that the symphilins are probably a secondary 
that because in a sense part of their their thing is is their decomposers I mean they might have eaten on the roots anyway but this looks more like there's a fungal problem because what happened is the corm just failed to thrive at all and we um, we think this bed ha has got a problem with uh, it's out of balance and and we have a fungal infection going on in here that is uh, it's nailing these plants I don't know for sure what variety of fungus we're talking about but we do have some phylons eating the roots so I think it's a combination of fungus and some phylons and uh, we're taking this bed out of ranunculus production for a number of years so when you start digging into them you just see rot and there's some phylons on the roots okay. there is yeah, there's a little white guy right there. Ugh. So we got him again, and we thought we had the problem licked. And uh, so we're not going to plant ranunculus in this house probably for a number of years. And uh, we had no problems with anything else last, last year. Fall, last, uh, last fall, Celosia, Celosia was, was gorgeous. Three and, foot tall, yep. big head. Yep was so wonderful so we thought that it was fixed and we um we had a problem with ranunculus in the bed on the other side where our tulips are and we can take just a swing over and take a look at that we did have a problem with one variety but we think that was weather damage uh got to that um, because we had a number of problems with things that were um we, we froze out we lost most of our parrots due to that and this looks like uh, something like a failing to thrive type issue over here. However, most of the tulips look like that. They really came in healthy. They looked good. Um, we're doing an inner planting after we finish with tulips with some early sunflowers. They're looking fine. And so other things in here are doing okay. So it's why we're kind of beginning to believe that um, the symphylon population explosion in this bed over here is primarily first it's a fungal infection and the plants get weakened and then after that the symphylons come in and just finish them off. So, yeah, this was an expensive, um, expensive thing. We lost two, well three, three colors out of this are dark, are Five. pure white. 750 corms. Yeah, about 750 corms. Um, and so we've got to uh, we've got to rethink this out. And I think the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some soil tests in here again and see uh, where we're at and um, kind of go from there. But we know that there are some, you know, when, when things warm up in here, we get no we get no rot problems or anything like that. And these guys are just, um, you know, it's really hard. When you look at these, you go, we put these in the ground and they were just perfectly healthy. And now there are just nothing left of them. They, like they didn't, they didn't thrive at all. It's kind of like you can also see it sent up a bloom, but there's no roots to hold it up. Yeah, in a case like this one here, uh, there was no real roots in the plant. I mean, it had like three roots left on it. Can't and support the blossom. Can't support the stem. <laughs> Surprisingly, it made a stem. I, I wouldn't even think it would have had the energy to do that. The will to, to bloom yeah, and to, reproduce. To <laughs> so we're going to rip this bed out. and. Um, Are we going to do anything to it for the symphylums? Um we did rye in here last year and it did kind of knock them down a little bit but honestly you know once you get away from the plant itself and you dig in the soil you can see a few of them but it's not like they're running all over the place i mean like i just dug down a couple inches there and there's not really anything there well, lots of good worms lots of good worms and some other arthropods you know, so, so they were just coming in to eat the rotten roots. That's our feeling on it. There's some eggs of some kind there. So I think um, there's plenty of moisture in the soil. That's not that's not an issue. And it wasn't the pre-soak or anything like that because, no, because they did, we did the, the exact same process on the other bed that we saw in the other house, and uh, 
No, this is this is post. It didn't come in. I, I sincerely doubt it came in on the quorums because first of all, we've got quorums from two separate suppliers here, and they're they're different series. And um, and those same suppliers are over in the other house exactly, that are thriving, thriving well. big blooms. So um, so it's soil and it's soil location. And this is the second year we've had this happen. Is. We so, have to do better with crop yeah. rotation. The, well, the problem is, you know, when you only have so many hoop houses, and, <laughs> and you want to grow everything. And yeah, you want to grow a lot of stuff. <laughs> you just you end up. Um, unfortunately, we thought we had the problem solved because it looked like um, the crop after last, you know, the solution and everything looked great. And so, live and learn. Anyway. Thanks for watching the video. Sometimes you know you gotta w see the glory with the uh, not so glorious, ugly, the ugly. And uh, but we wanted to show you this that uh, and it wasn't because um, there have been other folks out there talking about you know they're having some problems with their ranunculus at various stages, and it's just, we just wanted to show that you know it's not picture perfect here, and it's like uh, we have a night and day situation, and that's why we believe. Where we're at is it's a soil issue more than than anything else. So, thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to check out our other videos. We have uh, quite a few other things out there on other topics. You can go through the playlist and find it. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And by the way, we are on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and uh, so we try to uh, you know get out there and communicate with folks. And so, thanks for watching today, and hope you have a good day. Bye.